Hello, 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 hello. Oh, this is my resting spot. Stop at the farm. I've got a few vegetables you want to see? I would love to. What do you got? Some radishio. Got beautiful onions. Got some squash. Yum. All right, well, let me show you the place. Yeah. Are you videotaping? I am. How do you yeah. know? Stop. Okay. Well, here it is. Ta -da. Welcome to Four Corners of the Earth. Four Corners Club in Delhi. <laughs> Voila! Getting ready for the long weekend. Thursday through Sunday. All right, well, let me wash my hands. Oh, look at the mess. Oh, my. <laughs> That's a project. That's a project. All right, so we're going to slice a whole lot of onion. Cool. We'll sharpen the knife. See my array of sharpening tools. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it sounds good in the headphones. Okay. All and right. you want to talk while you chop onions? Yes. Awesome. You got um, a question for me? I have a few, just a few. Okay, we can let's skip see. any. Um, so we're here for my show, Being in Burlington. I told you about it a little bit the other day. Uh -huh. Pretty self-explanatory title. Um, yeah. Do you have any questions for me before we start? About how long and how much? <laughs> we'll be out of here by four. Free, yes. our time is free. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so tell me about how Four Corners came to be. Oh. What's its origin story? <laughs> oh, you're going right. I'm going in you're, right to the beginning. You're going right for the gutter. <laughs> or what they call it? Right for the... Right for the throat? Yeah. <laughs> um... Well, I guess it was meant to be. Meaning I was carpenter one day and I was on four corners a couple of days later. I mean, it all comes to sharpening your tools and precision cutting, I guess. I saw an ad in seven days, not seven days, Wilmington Free Press jump in my truck, throw it down here, and put it on the spot. Really? You don't speculate. Nowadays they would fucking draw all kinds of gra graphs and they would all kinds of analytics and whatever. Uh, that way, if you do it the way they do it nowadays, you'll never experience love. Mm. Business wise? Like if you do a business, anyways, how they do it, that's anyways. fair. Well, every, everybody's doing everything as a business. Yeah. Always a lot of statistics, analytics, <laughs> feedbacks. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of, there's a lot of other people who are actually working hard and not making much money at all. I heard about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's true. So you um, bought it right on the spot? Yes. Wow. No questions asked? No questions asked. You don't need to see any records. And mind you, it wasn't what it is now. It was just a dirty hole in a wall. I mean, the place was filthy. Because Red Onion got started here. Now you're getting the first dips and everything. This was gonna be in my book. Yeah. Ah. It can be the introduction to your book. So Red Onion got started here. Then they move up town, and then they were hiring beautiful people like you, college kids, and <laughs> they just run this thing down into the field and nothing. And then eventually they sold it to the guy. 
actually a real chef trained from Belgium. But he didn't have the whatever. He had other business ideas, so he didn't do anything to it. But he did bring the flat Cuban grills ah. up from Miami, so he opened the door for me. Mm. Without these grills, they've been all four corners. Mm. I only tell you a little bit of the story, I don't tell you the whole story. Okay. Because dog nap comes on the scene then. Of course. Gotta save some of it for the book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Do the onions not burn your eyes at all? Well, you just used to it? I will tell you one thing. America's got a lot of downfalls, but they do have the best onion in the yeah. world. It's making my eyes water. No, but America's got the best onion in the world. Mm -hmm. And so maybe I am somewhat used to it, but they really not, they're not as pungent as onions normally are, right? Yeah. That's good. I have to lean back a bit. The onion was so I had, I, had, I had an apprentice who was thinking maybe, maybe interested in the idea of buying Four Corners. Mm. And I had him slice onion. And he was kind of slicing it, kind of like any which way. I mean, not like totally any which way, but he wasn't like concerned with. And I tried to correct him, and he was like, "You mean people would mind if it's cut a little bit like this, a little bit like that?" You know, it's just like that attitude. If you, if people that make Rolex watch, everything is just so right. Because if it's every which way, then it's not a Rolex. Then mm. it's just a, it is what it is. I get chopping it again. That didn't do it for me. Eh, cutting Let's vegetables see. is an art. Well, sort of, but you have to have the right steel for the right. <gasps> How the paper towels. Damn. I think I should okay, like two some hours. Reserves. No, you have to do that. Cool. So you got the very beginning of it. Mm -hmm. It was May, so I guess it was. It was like a spring and a full bloom. When all this happened in in two thousand. Yeah, it's a long time. It's the year yes. I was born. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we have something in common. Yeah, four, four corners. corners and I were born in the same year. Uh-huh. Four corners is a Scorpio. Or not a Scorpio. Um, year of the dragon. Year of the mm -hmm. dragon. Scorpio would be the month. I was born in the year of the forest. Oh. So what else is there to know? You think? How has it changed since you started it in 2000? Or has it not? Has it really well, got to its core? Or? Every year I added maybe one sandwich every year, something like that. I since taken some down because it's oh, when really? it's too many options. It's like <laughs> people are already confused as it is, so why bother? Meaning we just make it harder for people. Mm. If some, Even if somebody eats here every day, they still... Uh, still plenty to choose from. I mean, at least 40. Then some on this side, some up, th up here that's not even listed. Mm -hmm. um, there is one guy, Steve. Okay. He's, I mean, since he's got married and has a beautiful daughter, so he doesn't come in as much. They still do. Mm -hmm. At least a couple of times a year, maybe more, and they get three or four or five sandwiches. But when he was single, when I started, this was, well, was a little bit already into it. He was here just about every day, and he was getting at least two, sometimes three sandwiches. He's got the record <laughs> for like quite a few years, three or five years he did that. That's at a least, lot of sandwiches. At least three times a week. I used to be open every day. Oh. 100 hours a week, but then I got older and my lower back can't handle it anymore. So I had to, I realized, you know, you work hard, you maybe make extra 50 or 100 dollars, and then you're going to see doctors and acupuncture and whatever, and whatever you got more, you give it to them, so what's the sense? Yeah. But as I was going through the process of getting better, you know, I went to the physical therapy, I learned one thing there. It was like indirectly, I learned it on my own common sense. And then I went to a guy that was doing like 
some like a spiritual thing. They don't touch you, but they half and half. They like. I didn't see what he was doing because I was laying down. Yeah. But he was like, I could hear him like. You know, Is like. Is it re- Reiki? Reiki? Uh, maybe so something what? like it. Yeah. I think he told me what it was, but it was different. So I learned something from him. He said at some point, you know, lots of first. And that's when I immediately closed down for two days. Lots of mm-hmm. rest. Um, and then I went to an acupuncturist, Julia. She's really good at it. So she kind of put the final touches, put me back together. But my lower back was killing me just because I was overworked. You know what I'm saying? And how many hours do you work a day? Oh, I'm down to like around 70, sometimes a little more, sometimes maybe a couple of hours less. For the week? Yeah. So quite a lot of hours. Well, but what else would I rather do? You know, now that I'm a little older, this is the best place on earth. (laughs) This is where the most fun is, Mm -hmm. for me anyway. Yeah. So... I was just thinking, you know, I got this sailboat and I'm not going to bother put it on the water this year. But it's a hassle, you know, you got to deal with this guy who who runs the place, but he doesn't care to run it. He's got other things in his life that he's doing, but he's doing it for money or whatever it is. And everything is rickety dickety. And you ask him to do something for you and it's a pain in the ass. And then, okay, he finally puts the boat on the water. Then you have to worry what's going to go wrong with it. It's just a hassle over a hassle over a hassle. Here I come. Everything is a routine. Everything is just the way I design it and whatever. I don't know. It's just a hard time. You go to a concert or a festival. You have to drive there. You have to deal with everything. They're going to put band on you. They're going to mark you. They're going to... (laughs) <laughs> here I got all kinds of people I talk to all day long mm-hmm. you got to enjoy that if you don't then it's not a profession for you I guess yeah. right? you got to like talking to people and hearing them as well I guess as opposed to working for money what keeps you going like those conversations probably I mean you know it's alchemy I like experimenting I do that every day with anything I oh I just made this it's a traditional dish where I grew up. Oh. I'll have you try it. What is it? <laughs> what do we call it? Hrenjovka. It's beets, horseradish, and then I, that's the basics people do, but then, you know, I put a little truffle oil, put a little fresh garlic, I don't know, maybe it's not for you, but I feel like it's really delicious. It's worth trying. Yeah, try it. Do you, you want to try some? I would love to try I'll, I'll give you a glass. I'll give you a glass. Mm, smells good. Should we take a video of us trying it? Oh, we might taste it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> now you're going to have to like it. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Cheers. You can I'll put them see whether right. that's something for you. It's the first thing you do in the spring because horseradish, when it just comes to be, it's like the first thing that starts coming out of earth. Yeah, I and like it. Like, and it's got... It's very flavorful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. But it's just, you know, Here. it's just the alchemy that I kind of... Flavors is like... The horseradish makes it spicy. You, you but know how, how people play music by ear? Mm-hmm. That's how I do flavors. It's like, I don't need the nose, I don't need the recipes, kind of. No, I really like it. I like the spicy. Mm-hmm. I don't usually like beets either. Well, that'll uh, that'll help you out. Put mm-hmm. some iron in here. Wait, where, where is this dish from? Uh, well, people probably in Ukraine might be doing it. In Russia, maybe in. Um, but I grew up in what they call Slovakia now. Yeah. I have a friend who's half half Slovakian and half what? Indian. Oh yeah? My mom's um, Slovakian and her dad's Indian. She's oh yeah? yeah? Where? 
Where is that? Not around here. Around here? Um, no. She grew up in India. Her education she did in India. Okay, so her college. her parents were ambassadors or something? No. Um, I don't know. How did they even meet? Um, I don't remember she told me, but um, mm -hmm. they okay. met when they were young. Oh, we're gonna have to do that. She can soup. Oh, it's on with this world. But you're just gonna have to tell her how delicious it is. I will. So, what else is there? What made you choose sandwiches? What well, is about sandwiches? as I said, you know, it all kind of just happened on its own volition. I was just the media or whatever, you know. So it's not like I was sitting down and drawing graphs and making projections <laughs> and mm -hmm. figuring things out. I just kind of winged it from, from the hip. Mm -hmm. I was shooting from the hip. I still am. You know, I'm not a fan of how world got to be <laughs> with all this Silicon Valley shit. Mm -hmm. Everything premeditated. Oh my God. It's a <laughs> Who wants I'll to live you. that way? People are, the people are stressed. Yeah, who wants to live that way? I do get, I get uh, depressed about it. Mm -hmm. I do. I need to get on a medication, I feel. Where would you go on vacation? If you Not could. vacation, medication. Oh, medication. <laughs> I thought you said go Just on like vacation. Just like the rest of you. I was like, that sounds, I was like, vacation uh, sounds nice. Yeah. Oh, vacation I am going to have to go, but I have, you know, I have a friend. And she is in Russia, so things are a little more complicated. Yeah. She can't go to Europe. Mm -hmm. and, but like the Arab countries, we think about Oman, maybe. Mm. One friend of mine talked it up, went there and loved it, so I don't know. So we have to find a neutral place. I mean, she can go to Thailand, but man, I don't know, this goddamn world. 48 hours to get to Thailand yeah. from Boston or New York. What the Two fuck? Two days. What the fuck? Each way. Oh, gosh. You know what I'm saying? Four days of flight. Why? It takes two days. It takes, I think, two days to get to India. It's like three flights. It's bad. Why? But even if it was, I just don't, you know, with all the computing power and everything they have, how can they not figure it out a little better? But maybe the strategy is to, to discourage people from traveling, so... Maybe. But so we're gonna have to figure out where we go. My last trip I went was Istanbul. Oh, did you like it? Liked it all right. I guess we had good times. But I have some family there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a it's a peculiar a little town. Mm -hmm. um, I had a little bit of luck with restaurants and yeah, we 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 were there for two weeks. Our Airbnb pictures aren't right you know so uh, they were a okay but they were a little bit disappointing yeah but the price was right I guess whatever seventy dollars a day or something oh yeah that's not bad yeah, yeah I have family there I mean it wasn't terrible but it wasn't just so it wasn't just life-changing <laughs> no no <laughs> it's unfortunate. and actually you know on the main strip where like all the tourists go the food is terrible man. really I mean, it looks on when you see it, you're like, oh, wow, I want it all. But then it's just, and then one day it's this, and then for the next day they mix things up, and it's something um, else. You yeah. know? What, what dish were you most looking forward to in Turkey? Oh, that's a, that's a direct question. Eh. I wasn't any kind of dish. I was going to try the kebab, the street. Yeah. You got it. Again. So there was like a popular place. They didn't. Mm -hmm. The kebab was delicious. They had a wheel, you know, they stuck like, I don't know, one ton of meat. Yeah. The goddamn guy, he was giving me three slivers of meat into my bun. I'm like, give me a double. I'm paid double and it's still nothing in my bun. I'm like, come on. So that Not was even a meal. That was disappointing yeah. again, you know. They yeah. were so stingy. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Tourism is always like that, I feel like. So... But we did find some, but we had to go like way out of our way to find. And we found some like where we stayed, 
like a bakery. I actually have pretty good videos from it. It was like Myers Bagel. It was just mm -hmm. like even the guy so looked like the guy, like oh, the guy so that funny. he was. They were honest. They were doing like a real, you know. It was like a little pizzas, whatever they call it. It was like a, a ship. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Ooh. It wasn't round. It was just like you know, like yeah. a ship. And it had like pizza, had cheese and some vegetables. They had wood fire darling. Man, they work hard all day there. And it was only uh, $2. Wow. And for one person, that was plenty. Yeah. So you did find at least one good place. I found a few. Yeah. On top of the bazaar, mm -hmm. somebody tipped me off from here that there is a place like that. So that was like, you know, five star. The service and everything was impeccable. It was, it was like what they do at the Windsor or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Palace. Yeah. Uh, you know, a few traditional meals. Everything was just perfect. So that was that was an experience. Yeah, that sounds really good. You know, the waitress are that's like their career. They're like 30, 35, 40 years old. Mm -hmm. They all clean. They all got their outfit. They all charmers. You yeah. know, it's a it's, it's a like, real deal. It was a real deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mentioned when I was here the other day that running four corners is really a labor of love. So what's the value of food made with love? <laughs> in your opinion? Laughter. Laughter? Uh, well, what is worth more? Somebody getting out of their way telling you that they enjoy themselves because of what you did for them or you running to the bank with the thousand dollars I don't know you know yeah good answer um what's the value <laughs> am no, I gonna I pass <laughs> what am I gonna pass yes it's not a test don't worry also the nice thing about okay, editing is that is you done. pick out the best pieces so uh-huh oh so you're gonna be chop chop chopping yeah I'm gonna have to Chop it. I don't have to chop it too much though. Yeah, just like maybe 95% of it. It'll be like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, what's the value of food made with cultural influences and that intertwining of food and culture? Well, I'll tell you a story again. Okay. You know, it's not even so well. How you go about it? Meaning, usually the cultural, ethnic food you you're looking for, and it is, in many people's judgment, good food. It's good because it's usually first generation immigrants. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't know any better. They don't have any opportunities to speak of sort of. They don't know people, so they doing this, and uh, and so they so they kind of doing what they doing, and they not speculating like. Although I don't know some Asian places, I think they they buy very cheap produce to sell you cheap. So I would never eat in those places, but so what is good about ethnic? Well, the idea is for food to be made with love and care. You know, when we we grew up like a self-sufficient community, it wasn't political, it wasn't, it's just the way people live. There wasn't propaganda, there wasn't agenda. It's just the way people live. So people grow most of what they ate. Um, so like self-sufficient farming community, almost like the Amish people without the religious or whatever, the political edge. So, I would travel back home. There is my mom, that's her portrait. Oh, okay. I'll have to get a close up of that one before So, we when I come from here, you know, sophisticated, I went to UVM, I traveled a little bit. She never traveled much anywhere. She was, I asked her to come here, and she was, what am I gonna do there? I said, mom, you're gonna see architecture, art. And she says, well, I see it here. People 
architecture I see there, why would I go to America to see it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, Mom, come on. But you know, now that I got older, it kind of makes sense. Uh, you know why traveling now? I don't know. I'm not sure I'm going <laughs> to, it's like a factual truth. I feel it is, but I'm going to just, uh, I don't even know whether I should say it. But back in the day, most Europeans were forbidden to travel. I think mostly just people of, from Israel were allowed to travel. And everybody else was a slave of a sort. Mm. And so if you wanted to even go to the village next door, whoever was your lord, you had to ask for permission. I mean through like Middle Ages and up yeah. to like 18th century. I think that how things were. So the travel thing is like this ultimate sense of freedom, right? Mm -hmm. You can travel because people weren't allowed to travel. Um, um, so why was I telling you that? What were we talking? Oh, 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 oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, yeah. So my mom. So I come from here. I said, Mom, you don't even know, but. We were eating so well, everything was organic. <laughs> and my uh. mom says, my ass organic. If I didn't put a fertilizer, nothing would grow. <laughs> oh my but God. But you know why it was <laughs> good quality and why it had like positive effect on people maybe? Because everybody there is tall, at least six foot. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just genetic or whatever, but it was planted, grown, and harvested with love and care, all by hand. No machines, no throwing around. Today I was picking up these avocados, they like so green, and I'm just imagining how they harvested, how they, like the machine sort of, they went through the belt, like tumbling down and then somebody throw it there and somebody throw it there you know like when you see some like on instagram or tiktok how they throw the luggages at the airport oh yeah so definitely not with love and care so the same happens with fruits and vegetables because they're mm -hmm. traveling from who knows where and they've been transferring it so many times and so we go to a supermarket i walk in and Everything has got a red cross on it. It's everything is like poison, you know. Except here and there, exception. I did buy this apple, and today I bought some peaches. They look all right, but they, are, I guess, from Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, Do you usually try to buy vegetables and produce from local farms. That's not my political edge, but I just, I mean, most people probably don't even know how to tell what's good quality. Yeah. I have a knack for it, so oh, that's good to know. So I can I, I, I couldn't even explain to you how. But it's you know how, how it shines, how it looks, how it feels when I pick it up. You know, it's a so so there you go. Cool. Local local and organic. Good to know. Yeah my ass. I'm why, not why I didn't put the fertilizer. <laughs> how old is she when she said that? Oh she was like almost eighty. Oh my goodness. Mm. Well, she definitely had a lot of spirit in her. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. She she was up on her feet until just a couple of months before she had to go. I had discussion with my friend on the phone last night. I said he was up to me. I cut everybody off at 80. 80 yeah. and you're going. It's a good and, life. And he couldn't agree with me. Mm. He couldn't agree with me. I don't know. Would you agree with that? There would be like a national policy that... Once you're 80. I don't know if we could do a national policy, but I think 80 is a good life. Yeah. What do you What do you have to gain after 80? A lot of sleep, maybe. That's it's what I'd be looking forward it, to. At 80. You know, I was telling him. You know, it's like if you'd like person that it's into pennies, and they have all these pennies, but they worth nothing. They can't buy nothing with it, but they have all these pennies that they love. So that's what the life is. <laughs> After 80, I feel. I haven't got there yet, but, yeah. you know, I've seen things around and whatnot. But whatever. Some people will get offended what I'm saying. Maybe you shouldn't put it in the movie. I don't know. We'll see how it comes up on camera. Uh, you never know. Uh, um, why Burlington? Oh, what drew, what draws again, you to again, the community? Nope. 
no graphs. Oh, <laughs> when I first got here, nobody in Burlington knew what the word community meant. <laughs> what about now? Well, now everybody's throwing it around, but still, I don't think they threw to it. It's just like the word love. Everybody throws it around. That's true. How do you see community then? Well, I'm not good at it. Um, the only community I have, <laughs> you and I over the counter. Um, that counts as community. I feel like you have a little Four Corners community too. We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... Uh, well, community is where people take care of each other. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm not going to speak to the local here, but say the American politician, each one of them has a fake smile. There's nothing real about it. So they all... They all will tell you how much they care, and they all will smile, but they ask us. <laughs> yeah. So, whatever, whatever works. Um, if we do have some form of community here, what do you think Four Corners adds to it? If we do have some what community? If we do have some form of community in Burlington, uh -huh. what do you think Four Corners brings to it, contributes to it? Well, it's a place of respite. Um, I think people can come and enjoy the flavors, relax, the humming of the coolers, you hear it, it sort of kind of puts you in a meditative, I see many times people close their eyes and just sort of hang out, you know, just kind of taking it in. Somebody suggested I do a video on uh, YouTube which would be just... It wouldn't be the video, just the sound. What they call that? Art? Podcast? No. Like, yeah, the yeah, like, there's an abbreviation for it, like RPM or RMP or... VPR? No. That's no. from on public radio. No, no, no. It's just so, yeah. it, it would record all the oh. sounds. ASMR? Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody suggested... I actually I love that. ASMR. Yeah? Mm hmm So I probably should get on it and get it up online. You should, yeah. Would you know how to do it? You, you would go up yeah. on TikTok immediately. You would probably go up on TikTok. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I so brought on the card for you for CCTV. If you did want to make a show there Oof. in their studio, uh -huh. that's I the first like contact. I feel like I should, but you know. I, 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 okay, so there is an email too. Yeah, there's an oh, email on you. there of the best person to oh, contact about Appreciate using the studio. Okay. They could help you get a TV show started. I know you were interested in doing a talk show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'd be nice. Wow. Yeah. Well, now you have the contacts if you ever find okay. time. All right. Mm -hmm. It's a nice person. Yes, it's very nice. It's a community-oriented nice. person. Yes, very. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. He's very nice. So um, how does this at at the community? I mean, it's a um, like say somewhere by Boston. There is this place that's like the place people go out of the way to go to it. It's a fish place. Mm -hmm. But you go in, it's like a jail. It's got these nondescript tiles up the wall, like up to here and everywhere. It's just, <laughs> when I was there, I felt like I just entered the jail. What is it? What restaurant? It's like north off, so you get on Route 1. Is it like illegal seafood? Maybe. It's... Place? And even the food wasn't that, you know, it was a lot of deep fried, like whatever. And the way they served, it was just like a, like a jail cafeteria, I'm not kidding. Oh my God. So It's probably expensive too. Eh, probably. So how do you go to that place compared to here? I mean, this is my home away from home, meaning if I do go home, I only go home to sleep. That's about it. And so the rest of my life I spend here. So it kind of. Yeah. So well, you definitely spend enough time here. I think 70 hours. It's yeah, yeah, very yeah, adequate, yeah, you yeah, could yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, do you prefer Lotusov or Lotso? Well, Lotso is just rolls off the tongue, Lizzie. Yeah, lots of love. Mm -hmm. um, there is some Americans that come in, they do take the 
time and they pronounce it properly, it's interesting. And they sell Ladislav. Even for me, it's hard to say. Really? <laughs> yeah. Do you like when people call you Ladislav? I guess not too many people do. Mm. So, but I guess I do. I, maybe I should have stick with it a little, a little like, my name is Ladislav. <laughs> little name tag? Yeah. Everybody asks how you pronounce it, and then I double guess myself. Is I am I pronouncing it right? Eh, <laughs> it's it's your name. You can pronounce it however you want. I promise. Uh, um, who is Ladislav? Like, how do you define yourself? Oh, how do you see yourself? I know that's the oh, big one. Oh, I see myself as a slave, a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> I got a lot of ideas, just don't have the outlet for them, but I guess that the talk show might be one. Mm -hmm. um, I like design, I like flavors. I like nuances in the books when I read. This morning, you, have, you know Herodotus? I don't. One of the first historians, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Thucydides and Herodotus, and he writes a lot about Egypt and the customs and stories, what people did and how they did it. Like today, they were saying that the guy could serve you water sitting down, but woman, if she served you water, she had to stand up. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but a lot of a lot of interesting information. So I like that, and then I connect the dots, and I have my own take on life, listen to a lot of Russian news lately. Has it been uplifting at all? Probably not. Yeah, it's not uplifting, meaning it's a, it's a clusterfuck. Everybody's guilty, not just one. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. But I feel like they have the more insightful information about what's going on. The Western media, man. Let's keep politics and journalism separate. Mm -hmm. You said that last time I was here, too. That's my take on it, mm -hmm. because it's awful. It's the journalism, all it is, it's a... Although Russian, I guess, too, because now Russia is very nationalistic because you know they the shit is serious yeah so the west has built up rome have, hasn't gone out of business it's right now in washington dc and so they've been building this empire for the last at least five thousand years since they wrote the old testament and now russia is challenging all that's a <laughs> that's a serious business, man. Yeah, it's a mess. That's a serious business. So, and man, I don't know that nuclear man. That can go off any day, and then yeah. I don't know. Scary. Well, scary. I don't know. The scary will be just over, I guess. That's true. It'll be just over. Is that your philosophy on death? <laughs> just over. <laughs> no, I'm. What is scary to me is that maybe we live forever. That's scary to me too. I don't want to live forever. I'm done this and this is it. I didn't have a kids for it. I don't want to keep on living. I want to be done with earth and everything. I don't even want to be a stone. Just be like... No stone. Like nothing. Like, But it's almost impossible. Once you existed, how are we going to not exist? Yeah. So I'm a little kind of intimidated by that thought. God damn. I think most people are intimidated by death at least a little bit. Not death. By that. Oh, well. Oh, oh. But by the idea of living forever that they kind of keep reusing you. Yeah. Okay, just a few more questions. Uh -huh. Let's see. How? So that was how you see and define yourself. How do you think other people see you? Do you have well, any I idea? You have to ask other people. <laughs> there is plenty written on... Uh, that's true. On the Yelp and etc. But you know what? I'll uh, I'll warm up that chicken soup for you and I. Oh yeah. Oh, it's amazing. <coughs> it's 
You see how it wiggles? That's a real soup. Ooh, you see how it wiggles? Yeah. It doesn't pour, it wiggles. Uh, I'm just gonna put it in the microwave for you. Uh, I don't. Oh, oh, there was a garlic in it. Yeah, garlic down. So I'll I'll give you a leg of chicken. Sure. You want it? Well, maybe something without a bone might be easier to eat. started with dog nap and then I went and then I can't stop myself after <laughs> that <laughs> well because I'm thinking it's my 401k mm -hmm. let's see what they think of for corners let's get them here who is it I don't know. <laughs> well they, they're going around so I guess they know how it's done I guess so in Burlington and in the surrounding area to know about you and to know about Four Corners? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they already know what they need to know. you wanted to add or anything else you want to be said? For Burlington said? to know? For Burlington to know or for our interview purpose, anything? Anything I didn't ask about you wanted to talk about, stuff like that? Well, well, you know, the nature of the beast is such that everything is made custom to order. So it takes time. And getting help, people that just have a little hole in their life that they need to patch for a month or two or a half a year. Been there, done it, don't need it. So the thing cannot really be speeded up. Well, you know, you know what the bad news is? What? America just gonna get a whole lot of worse. Yeah, I can't see it getting any better right now. Because it's simple. Because you and your friend here, and and I'm saying you, not to be personal, yeah. But you represent the generation, and the generation after you. Well, this cell phone, it's the worst thing ever for humanity. It really fucked everything up. It fucks people up. People spending a lot of time on it without spending the time with each other or whatever. And so nobody is interested in any kind of like a <laughs> Well, I think this is what's really going to happen at the end that the reality is going to have dramatically to change mm -hmm. because nobody wants to contribute to this reality nobody wants to work I wouldn't have to work 70 hours once it, if the price was right it's, the price is cheap but everybody thinks it's expensive mm -hmm. and so if you hire help where is the money coming from 
so maybe the government should be paying for the help I don't know but then who is gonna be the help if nobody has interest in this kind of work yeah. well there's dishes you have to sweep you have to clean people don't even clean their room what are they gonna clean here for so all said and done we're gonna end up on the mainframe we're not gonna have genitals you're not gonna have to worry about that. And we can explore all kinds of things. And we're not gonna have to have clothes. We're not gonna have to eat. We're not gonna have dishes. You know what I mean? It'll be clean. So all you have to do, just like you're playing computer game, there is nothing to clean. We'll be sad to not have to eat. <laughs> well, they'll figure out. So I guess they will narrow your sensual experience so when you I mean you're not gonna be even born you'll be on the mainframe That's you know true. What I'm saying? so you're not gonna have the body you have now I guess if I wasn't born I wouldn't worry about eating food no but I mean you'll exist but you're not gonna be born you're not gonna have the body you have now mm -hmm. so you just might need some electricity or whatever that's gonna <laughs> be you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I know, last time I was here. And all that will come because people have no appreciation for this reality. They kind of, they're okay with the reality. They just, the reality is not going to exist if people are not going to be contributing to it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to fix the road. Somebody has to fix the car. Somebody has to make it. Somebody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All this shit that America built up now itself quite a bit, quite a lot of apartments and I don't know what. Just in a little bit of time, there'll be not enough people to take care of it and everything will start falling apart. It'll be, oh my God, good luck. <laughs> and because, we're gonna have to deal with all of it. Because you're not gonna be on a frame yet, I don't think, not your generation, but I think that's the ultimate dream. <coughs> Just imagine all the colors and who knows what else. Right now, we can't even conceive of all the experiences you're gonna have. <laughs> without feelings though, just intellectual. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons I came to America was because I was intellectually starved. Mm -hmm. Now I'm here intellectually saturated, but I'm emotionally starved. So it's either one or the other. Yeah. It seems like you can't, can't have it both ways. Uh, so there you I go. wish you could. Well, I don't know. Americans, maybe they do. It's just, yeah, yeah, sorry. That's what I mean. It's just that I'm, I don't know you didn't grow up here, I don't know. The older I get, the more separate I feel. Mm. So what are you going to do? <laughs> Make sandwiches? More of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, seven more here if I have to. How many sandwiches do you think you've made? Oh, probably like 10 million. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Well, by the time I'm done, I probably have made one sandwich for every Vermont. I fed the whole state mm -hmm. and some. It's a decent goal. <laughs> uh, you know, like truckers, they do million miles. Mm -hmm. So maybe not quite million, but the population keeps growing. So maybe they outgrow me and I'll, I, I won't be able to make a sandwich for every Vermont. Mm -hmm. I hope not. I oh know. yeah, <laughs> you hope not. I mean, I hope it doesn't outgrow <laughs> <laughs> the ability. No, Vermont is popular. I, I was buying on Craigslist something and I went to uh, Bristol and uh, there was real estate. I had a little bit of time to kill, so there was real estate agency window with some postings. Man, for a shithole, for a house that it's like a total, it's like a rebuild, you know, you have to. They won half a million dollars oh out in the boonies. The it's housing in Vermont right now is insane. Right. So you buy it for half a million, then you have to put another half a million to bring it, to have it the way you like it. Like, where do people get the money from? How is that done? I, don't know. I met someone today huh? who lived in my current apartment 40 years ago, and her rent was a fourth of what I pay now. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. So they probably want 1,200. It's I think it's it. 3,000 for my apartment, but there's four of us. Mm -hmm. It's 800 a month. Mm -hmm. 
which is... I don't have a large budget, so... My friend lives in a two-bedroom apartment and is paying one, se $1,070. Oh my god. So that's a deal like Tiny this. kitchen. Mm -hmm. So he's paying 1100 Yeah, 1170 like Okay, one, oh, one 1200 10, $1,070 actually. Yeah, so 1100 uh, That's not the worst, I guess. For it's two bedrooms. Good. No, no, that's her rent. Oh, so that's, that's her part. Her rent. Oh, oh, so oh that's her, that. they share it. Yeah. Oh, I got mm -hmm. you. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 yeah. Well, half of that would be unheard of in Burlington now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I don't even know why they're not building like 500 square feet single efficiencies and like put a cap it's a five it's a ten dollars a square foot so it's five hundred dollars you got your shower you got a little kitchenette you got a bed and if you're single or for whatever reason that's why they not like build thousands of them mm. you know they just keep raising the prices mm -hmm. the soup is really good it should be. Most of it is uh, organic. I guess there is that farm I stopped by on my way here on Wednesday. Heads, heads over fields. Mm. They seem to do honest work there. It's a bit pricey, but hey, they probably not. Everything is now. They're not making killing either. It's just farming is just the stuff. It's restaurant business. Yeah. <laughs> Farms especially just got, all got flooded too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends where we are. Yeah, yeah. I heard a lot of farms had to like harvest it's everything it's as the flood was happening. also stressful too. This here is stressful because restaurant is like uh, a service, like water, like on demand. Mm -hmm. At least mine, you know. Yeah. So to be in that position that you are on demand, <laughs> middle class figured it out. They all making appointments, you know. <laughs> you know. So they schedule it properly. Here it's like anybody can call anytime. You get a haircut you can't get. Nobody takes walk-ins, you know what I'm saying? You have mm -hmm. to you have to schedule yourself. Yeah. So I, know, I feel like I, I can't even remember last time. So I, I guess that should be the next time. step of four corners. Everybody's gonna have to schedule themselves. Uh, you have to schedule an appointment to come eat a sandwich. Uh-huh. Yeah, you have to order like at least a couple of days ahead of time. Eh. Or a week ahead of time, so I know what to get for the week. Mm. Ah, anyway. <coughs> so all gloom and doom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do have good flavors. <coughs> you know, I think I took a bite of pepper. Oh, I love the peppers. I do too. Mm. I got a bite of one right from the bottom. But you weren't like expecting it, so it got no, you. No, I wasn't. Going. Um. Last time I was here too, you were talking about how everyone is like hopeful to make change when they're young and then we're all assholes by we're 50. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, what yeah. if we're not? Would you call yourself an asshole? Well, that's a good <laughs> question. That's mm -hmm. a good question. Um, Two different takeaways mm -hmm. from the question. <sighs> like what if that didn't happen with our generation? Well thing is I'm not in the power of I'm not in position of power nobody depends on me but I guess bankers and politicians and people that make policy I don't make policies for anyone I for that reason I don't even have pets I don't want anybody being captive I, I could I, I have a hard time controlling pets. I don't want to control. That's why maybe I don't even have employees. I don't want to control anybody. So am I an asshole? I don't know. I guess if I said that everybody is, then I'm too. <laughs> I'm going to have to admit. Um, how does that uh, demonstrate itself or how does that uh, reveal itself? Do you think there's any chance that our generation could grow up to not be assholes? Well, it's just the reality is set up that way. It kind of like forces you into that position. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, consider this, right? So they wrote the Bible. It's a serious document. It's a manual to our reality, more or less. So they made 10 commandments. I just saw on Instagram like a little joke that Moses walked out of the cave and had 19 commandments, but he dropped one of the tablets and it shattered. So <laughs> he only had was left with two. Whatever those other nine were. But these Ten Commandments, so such a thing as a man making love to somebody's wife is a, is a mortal sin, or what they call it. Uh, that it's a deadly sin. But to write somebody back, meaning to take advantage of somebody, that's not a deadly sin. So as soon as you're taking advantage of somebody because you size them up and you figure out they didn't grow up as sophisticated as your, they chip in their head is not as fast as yours and you take advantage of them, you're already an asshole. That's true. That so how come the Bible didn't make that a sin? They were already taking advantage of people then. There was hierarchy, you know, there is this queen and aristocracy and it seems like it's always been around even in Egypt and whatever. So why that is not a sin? To take advantage of another human being or for that matter of animals and everything else. So where do you stop it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because even you take advantage of your dog, you take advantage of the cows, you milk them, you eat them. So how, where do you stop it? That's a good question. You answered my question with a question. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, so I guess they say hope, hope is dying the last, but somewhere once I read, it's an interesting take on it, that hope is tied in with fear. So you can only be hopeful if you're already afraid of, I hope I'll see you tomorrow, that I'm actually saying I'm afraid I may not see you tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's an interesting explanation of... Yeah, I haven't heard that. ...of the whole thing. But, so yeah, how about your generation? Do it! Mm -hmm. I four, would like us to do it. Buy four corners and do it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Okay, is there anything you want to add before we have to run? Oh, I don't know. We should probably call it a day. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to slice some pickles or whatever. There's other things I do here, but maybe that's just good enough. I yeah. don't know. I got a few shots of you picking sandwiches the other day when I was here, too. Yeah? Got some of you layering pickles. Cheese. Maybe you sh I do have a... Somebody did once. She was, she was in a college studying film. Mm. And she made a little documentary. Mm. Uh, we spent a little more time together. I was totally exhausted. I was still working 100 hours a week. Like she was making a shot. And I was just planting something. And I, my fingernails were clean. And I was showing her photography from my childhood. And I see my fingernails. There is black behind them. I'm like, oh my God, this is no good, whatever. Oh, no. So we were, so now I'm a little, I know, a little, I was a little bit too, it was a little bit not professional what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Like whatever, my shirt was a little to the side. She, they didn't correct me. Mm -hmm. Whatever, you kind of have to, you know, make the person look the best they can. Yeah. Whatever. Well, looks great behind the counter, so. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Well. Let's Thank hope. You. Let's hope people take this to their heart. And they will uh, make the plan to come to Four Corners.